Hey guys, it's Doc, and I have something really cool to show you. A new product, a new high banker, and guess what? It's on my back. So hold on one second, I'll tell you about it. Hey guys, this has been in the this has been on the planning boards for um, almost a year now. Uh, we were planning on launching this in 2020, but we're launching it now. So it's gonna be available. Lots of people have requested something like this. We've been wanting to do a product like this. It's a new Mini High Banker, and it's a hybrid between the Mini and the Flare. So let me show you one thing that's really cool about it. First, before I get started, there's gonna be a link in the description down below, and that's gonna take you to the page for this product. Now I'm gonna put all of the questions or all the answers to questions that you might have. So remember that. The link is in the description below. So don't email us until you've gone to that page and read because everything will be on there. The weight, the specs, pump recommendations, everything's gonna be on there. Next, make sure you subscribe because this late this summer, we're gonna be giving away one of these uh, high bankers to a subscriber. So make sure that you subscribe and uh, turn your little bell on too. Hey guys, so uh, let me show you one thing that's really cool about this. Now I've put on back straps on this thing and I'm gonna put a link to these back straps on that web page. You can just order them off Amazon. Uh, they're pretty cheap back straps. I also put a handle on mine that I bought at Lowe's and I'll put a link to the handle because we don't supply that. Um, but you can, however you want to do it, if you want to backpack it, whatever you want to do. So here's the actual unit. Weighs about 36 pounds total and that includes the mats and everything on it. Again, I've just clipped backpack uh, straps onto it. So all I have to do if I want to just go out to the field, I take it off. Uh, the other thing that's really cool about it if you want to put a handle on this, you can actually just put a handle on it and you can just walk in with your little handle. I'm walking in, walking in. But if you need to hike somewhere, um, all I did, just so you know real quick, because I just drilled two little holes on the bottom here and I'll show you that later on. But I just put, and then these little straps just clip on and off. Again, I'll put a link to the backpack straps because we don't sell them, but I'll put a link to them. And this thing will run on a small pump. So I have I have my unit and I have my pump and I can hike in as far as I want. Really cool. So here's what we're going to do on this video. So the first thing I'm going to do on this video is I'm going to walk over to this unit set up and I'm going to go over some of the features and some of the specs on it. That's number one. Then I'm going to set it up and show it running and then I'm going to answer some common questions that we know we're going to get. As an example, I already have a piglet or I have a piglet with extension can I just buy the flare part of this and add it? And the answer is, is yes. Again, that'll be over on the web page. You can see it down there. You can order however you want. So that's what we're going to do. Again, I'll walk over, show it to you. I'll show it to you running, and then I'll answer some common questions. Okay, so today we just have it set up behind the warehouse just so you can see it. Again, we've put a lot of thought, of thought process into this unit, a lot of thought process. But the unit itself, um, again, the total field weight is about 36 pounds. Shipping weight with boxes and everything is a little bit heavier. But this is a mini piglet here. We've added a new flare section here and then a flare sluice down here. So this is 36, that's 36, and this is about, uh, I think it's what, 14 or 16 inches long, this flare section. Has a dampener mat that comes inside of it. So there's your dampener mat and that flattens out the water and it runs down. I'm showing it today with the optional clay claw, which if you go to the page, you'll see as an accessory. I would not run this unit without the clay claw, but I know a lot of people that do. Uh, the clay claw holds all the material and lets the, the rocks wash in here. You'll see it. And uh, then you just open it up and let the rocks fall out. You'll see that running here in a minute. Uh, comes with a one and a half inch PVC system. If you want to run it with a two inch pump, you can go to Lowe's or Home Depot and just buy some reducer fittings and reduce it or and reduce it from a two inch down to a one inch. You can do that. I've done that many times with my unit. So the unit comes from here up. That's how it comes. Comes with all the matting pre-made. Comes with a little uh, flood chamber. You'll see that happen in here. It comes with a mix of aggressive matting up at the top. So we basically have, uh, I'll try and name them here. We have Talon, Cut River Hog, Scrubber, Talon. What do I got there? Piece of bedrock, it looks like. Then we come down here, and on this lower section, what we've got is uh, there's a piece of UR that actually, it actually goes way under here, and it bolts from the bottom up here. 
then it goes to uh, talon, then it goes to mother load, then it goes to one wave mat, regular wave mat, then it goes to a Yukon mat, then it goes to mother load and mother load. Now that's how we have it set up today. And that's our, that's basically for running this anywhere you want, that's a great little mat configuration. You're exposing your slurry to a huge amount of different velocities, capture zones, it's just fantastic. Now this section attaches, uh, this is a fixed angle here. This is where you pivot it. I will let you know that this bottom hole is a little bit larger than the top one to give you some flexibility. You'll be able to go from about, you'll be able to do a small amount of movement in here. And if you need more movement, you can just make this hole larger. Comes with all your legs, your brackets. Uh, the header box simply attaches, gets held up. You can change the header box pitch from right here. Again, this is the flood chamber and there's moss over the mat in here with a hole down bar. Uh, aluminum Grizzlies, we're one of the only people that use aluminum Grizzlies to reduce the weight on this thing. Uh, has the, the new metal double ring holder in here, which is really nice and secure. Now I have glued my parts, which I don't recommend you do. I recommend that you take, I recommend that you take Gorilla Tape and glue these here and here. Otherwise they might blow off while you're running, but I've glued mine because I know how I have it set. And so that's the unit. That's the unit all set up and ready to run. Let's talk about pumps real quick. This is a new pump that we've been testing. Uh, I'm going to put a link to this over on the webpage and I'm, this is a pump I've been wanting for 10 years and what it is 2.3 horsepower, but it's got a big pump on it. This thing puts out a huge amount of water for the size. We, when we ran this, our first impression was, wow, you could run it. You could run a Raptor high banker on this thing. So we'll be running this thing at bare idle. Now, you can run as big of a pump or a little pump as you want, and all you would need to do is just put a ball valve, just put a ball valve here. So if you can't reduce your water down enough, put a ball valve. So if you have a two inch pump, put a ball valve, and you can control the flow. Because, and I'm at the point with this pump, I'm almost needing a ball valve because I'm having to run it almost at dead, dead idle. So next thing I'm gonna do is we're just gonna fire this up and uh, show you it running. Okay, so I'm just gonna run over. I'm gonna fire up the pump real quick. Okay, now you can hear the pump. <laughs> it's at dead idle. It's as low as it could go just about. And look at the water volume. I'm really impressed. So the key, to, the, the key to pumps is understanding that you have to have PSI. This thing's running, looks like it's running about 4,000 GPH right now, but the PSI is key to make this washing action happen. The water comes off here. I have actually a little too much water, but it's okay to have a little bit of water come off the end here. But what happens is, is you create a pool. So this little mat here, I'm gonna turn it and create more of a pool and water is going to come out both under the bottom of this mat and over the top. And if you want to change that flow and make it all come out the bottom, you can turn that, you can turn this flap and make it all come out the bottom. You can see this is about the right flow. Might be a little bit hot. It comes down here and look how nicely that thing flares out. It just kills all that flow. Again, this is the dampener mat. Just put the dampener mat on. Now the dampener mat probably should tighten so what these. What you can do now is I can turn this bar and adjust my mat. That's running good. That's looking really nice. All right, so Jacob, what I want you to do is I just want you to put a little bit of dirt in here. Keep going. Just fill this section up basically and then stop. Okay, stop. So what happens is the clay claw, which is optional, sits here and holds these rocks in here until they're clean. And then all I have to do is open this up and all my rocks will come out of here.
Okay, since we don't have a lot of water here today, I went ahead and I just seeded in uh, some very fine gold and some medium sized gold, different sizes, just seeded it in from old concentrates. And we're gonna run we're gonna run this through a little bit and just show you how it looks in the mat. Now you can see how quickly he's running this bucket. That bucket was about half full. Just do the whole bucket. Completely unclassified, heavy, heavy clay-based soil. This is Georgia excavated hay. And you can see how it just sort of sits there and melts. Now, when you get overloaded with rocks in here, just reach your hand in and just touch it. That's all you gotta do, just touch it. And the rocks will melt, the rest of it will melt. And once you're satisfied, once you're satisfied with how the rocks look, you can leave them in there as long as you want. Looks pretty good to me. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open it up. And let all those rocks shoot out. Again, if your rocks, you want your rocks to make it off the back and that's how you determine the pitch of your header box. Put them all done here. Again, unfortunately, we've got dirty water, so it's going to be hard to see gold in the mats, but hey, that's life. So I'm going to shut it down so we can look at this. Um, I had one of my guys take a metal, metal L here and weld it on because it does not come with a handle. So we added this. Do not. This is something we just fabricated and just welded on there. Makes it a lot easier. You'll notice that I have my handle going back this way over the heaviest part of my pump. And it's a one-hand carry. This is light. I forget the weight on it. It's like 30 pounds or something. Now the other pump. So this is uh, oh, it's the WX15. It's the Honda that you can buy. Now I will tell you, this thing's cheap. I forget how much it is, but it's like 170 bucks. I want to say, which is really cheap. These pumps run for something. I think um, personally, if it was me. I think I'd buy two of these, have a backup in my truck. That's the way I like to operate. But these are great pumps too. Uh, we've used these forever. Now I will tell you, we have not done any long-term testing reliability wise. Of course, it's a cheap China made pump, but man, for the money, I love that new little pump. When I clean this thing out, there's one bolt here under the header box that I undo and I take my bar out and then it's ready to go. And what I like to do when I clean it out is I turn this little mat up I turn that up so it's out of the way. Now this is the tricky part. This is the only tricky part that I've found, and that is with this, uh, getting this upper mat out. So what I do is I turn, I like to turn my dampener mat up out of the way a little bit, and then you reach in and grab one corner of your bottom mat, grab one side, and just let your water gently drain, and then you lift this up, and slide your mat out that way. That's how you do it. So just so you know, it's a little bit, took us a while to figure out the best way to do that. That's the best way to do it. The bottom mat is held in with one screw and it has, goes through the bottom and you'll see, you'll notice that there's a flap down here. It has extra piece of mat hanging out. And again, all you have to do uh, to clean the mats is just reverse roll them, dip them in a bucket, reverse roll it, dip it in a bucket. I may even show you that here in a sec. That's pretty much it, you're done. But I wanna, I wanna sort of wash these mats out a little bit and let you see some of the gold in there. So before I get off track, let me talk real quick about things that you might wanna do. People ask, can I convert it to a two inch dredge? Yes, just like our mini high banker, you can convert it to a two inch dredge and there's a video up. I'll put a, and I already put a link on this page to that. So you can convert it to a dredge. We don't sell any dredge parts. Make clear that we don't sell hoses, nozzles, pumps. We don't sell any of that, but we provide the resources where you can get that. The next question that's going to come up is, I already have a mini. Can I buy just the flare extension? Can you bring that over that flare extension? The answer is, is yes. Now this was one of the, this was one of the things that we debated a lot about on, um, on this extension is how do we make it not just for the mini, but to also fit a mini with an extension. 
so we had to do that too so this is this is exactly what you'll get if you order the extension for your mini or your mini with the extension you're going to get leg brackets you're going to get two legs you're going to get a little baggie full of stuff you get the matting you get the dampener mat, the bar, everything. And of course, you're gonna have to drill your own holes in your extension. Let me explain the width on this. And this is the critical point. Well, when you attach this, by the way, you're probably gonna wanna have the bar on. Put this little dampener bar on it so that you know where you can put it on it. So the mini outside, the mini is about eight inches wide. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna have, a, this is larger, this is like eight and a, three quarters or something, something around there. So we include, when you buy this, we include two spacers and they're three H inch spacers. Uh, the spacers will go inside here when you, when you have this. If you lose your spacers, which you will do by the way, at some point in time, just put washers. We actually have washers on this unit, four or five washers to, to take up that extra space. So you're gonna have an extra space in here if you attach it directly to a mini. Now, on an extension, an extension goes outside the mini, so it's a little bit wider. So that's why we made it additionally wider. So if you have an extension, you can put the extension, put this on the bottom of the outside of the extension and have a little bit less of the gap. Again, just use washers to take up the space. You may need two washers, you may need four or five washers. But again, we will include some aluminum spacers when you, uh, when you actually buy the entire unit. But I'm warning you, I guarantee you, like me, you're gonna lose the spacers and don't freak out, just have some extra washers with you. Uh, one quick note, let me just talk to you about this. On this unit right here, this is a standard quarter inch hole. This one is larger. And the reason why we did that is so that the unit needs to have some flexibility for adjusting. So you'd be able to adjust the pitch, but at the same time, if you have too much flex in there, it won't stay up, it won't stay up. So if you need some kind of additional pitch on here, one thing you can do is take a little round file and expand this hole on the bottom and almost make it like a slot. We were gonna do a slot, but we decided just to leave it a hole because we found that you get a great variance. You can go almost from flat down to almost like 12 degrees with that extension without a problem. But if you ever do need to expand it, you can't expand it. The unit ships in one box. Uh, I don't have the shipping weight on me. We, it'll ship anywhere in the world. We'll have links to everything. If you go to the webpage, uh, what we do with this unit, it's uh, we break out the shipping by zone. So if you live in the Southeast, it costs less, of course, than to ship it to California or to wherever, and then there's Alaska. So you just go look for your state. There's a button on there and you add it to the cart. Now don't forget, the clay claw is not the only thing that's really not included in this. Um, some people don't want it, I don't know why, but I wouldn't run the unit without a clay claw, I'm just telling you. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take pull the mats out real quick and we'll take a look at them. We always find a ton of gold up here, by the way. I can actually see a huge amount of fine gold right there on that lip. <laughs> I can see it, there's a big line in there. It's tough to see with dirty water, but uh, there's a piece of gold right there. There's a piece of gold right at my thumb. Uh, there's lead, see the lead right there? There's lead all in here. This thing is loaded with, I can see gold over here. Um, this, there's one screw under here. Jacob, will you undo that screw for me? Of course, you just pull that bar out. Now, of course, you're gonna be wanna be careful when you take this out, but I wanna take this out. And what you're gonna see is, is there's always a pile of gold. Cause what this does is this creates a deadening pool, but it's a real active deadening pool. And so what happens is, uh, it's almost like a fluid bed. This thing just piles up with, with gold. When you see it, you'll be amazed. Like right there, right there. I don't know if you can see it or not. There's a ton of gold sitting right there. And there's a huge amount of fine gold right there. That's like 100, 200 mesh gold right there. And this mat will have gold and pyrite and lead all inside of it. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knock out that mat, show you what's in that, that little piece of moss, and then I'll wash out this mat and then I'll wash out. Now what I do is I just set up a bucket and a tub, that's all I do. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this moss and I'm just gonna rinse this moss off right in here real quick. A 
I'm assuming you can see, so that's a line of super, super fines up here, larger gold up here. And it's amazing what will sit up in that mat. So that mat will have a ton of super fine. Again, that's 100, 200 mesh gold up just in the piece of moss, plus the larger gold up in here. That's pretty cool. So all I did is I just slid the mat out of the unit and then I would normally put it in the bucket. But what I want to do today is, but one thing I want to do today is I want to show you what just, what's sitting up under here, under this main piece up here. So this is what I'm talking about right here. All that gold. Now I haven't even started to wash off this dirt, but you can see all the gold that's just stuck in here. There's always a huge amount of fines up in this, this area. Okay, let's hopefully we can see this. See that right there? Ooh, see that right there? That's not dirt, that's gold. That's super fine gold. Same thing here. Super fine gold. Here, big line of gold. Look at the lead shot. That's a row of lead shots sitting right there. I've washed out a lot of the gold out of here, but you can just see right in there. Again, this is the first <laughs> six inches of a mat. I love that lead shot though. That's just so cool right there. Big pile of lead. So now real quick, I'm just gonna show you the right way to do this. Even though there's a lot of gold that's out of here. Just go into the bucket, put it in your bucket. Just like this. And then I'm gonna roll it reversed. So I'm going to reverse roll it and then just go up and down, turn it over, up and down. Then I want to reverse roll it the other way, up and down, and now my mat is clean. That's it. That's how fast it, that's why you can change your mats as often as you want because it's really quick. So now I'm going to put this in a pan, we'll see what's inside this of it. Is the top mat. Tilt your pan, it'll all rise to that side. That's a pretty cool picture there. Well, that's a pretty cool picture. See all that lead in there? Look at all the fines. That's really cool. And there are some chunkers in here too, some big pieces, but that's really cool. All you do is, for the bottom one, bring your mat up, undo your wing nut. Now what I like to do is what we call concreting the mat, which is tilt your sluice to the side, to one side, and let all the water drain out. And now all the water is out of it, so now it's easy to handle. So now I just pick up one side, slide it out and take it to the bucket. Okay, one thing I did, we want to talk about tuning and I wanted to show this mat real quick. This is what a good mat should look like at the end of it. See how I've got, this is the mother load mat, but I want you to see, I've got fine black sand inside of here. Same thing here, I should have a little bit of fine black sand in almost every single mat except the washer, excuse me, the wave mat. Now the wave mat is designed the wave mat's weird. It's designed to create a special flow. So you may not see a lot of black sand in here. You may not see a lot of gold in here, but it's doing its job, trust me. It's doing its job by creating something different in here. Then you got a Yukon mat that'll look totally different. And then you got two more mother load mats. So like I said, we're exposing this slurry to a huge amount of varying surfaces. So all I did was I rolled my mat up in the sluice Put it right in the bucket. Rinse it. Rinse it. Now I reverse roll it. Rinse. Rinse. 
she's pretty much clean. That's how quick it is. So now let's put this into a pan. One thing you will notice, that bottom mat will generate a lot of black sand, fine black sand, which is what you want. You want a lot of fine black sand in that bottom mat. What's kind of surprising to me is, is usually I see a flake or two get out of the upper box, but I don't see any larger gold in the bottom. I only see small gold in the bottom. That's easily 100, 200 mesh gold, maybe even some 300 mesh in there. That's pretty cool. So anyways, guys, there's going to be a link in the description down below that'll take you to a page that will have all the answers to your questions that are going to be on there. Everything that's related to this, you can find it. You have to roll down and look at all the information to find the different categories of the specs, accessories, pump recommendations, everything. Also, don't forget, click that subscribe button because we're going to be giving away one of these uh, late this summer, probably in, uh, probably in July or August, we're going to give away one to a subscriber. That's about it, guys. Real excited about this product. Talk to you later. Doc.